Hello viewers, today we are going to listen to Rama Mehta's Inside the Haveli Part 2. Our objectives today are to discuss the narrative technique of the novel, to speak about the themes in the novel and to elucidate the symbols in the novel. Inside the Haveli is narrated from a third person point of view. But the perspective is mostly from that of the protagonist Gita. The readers are privy to the thoughts of Gita, which makes them relate to her. Feminism is an important theme in the novel. The real state of women is depicted in the novel. The helpless state of the women is improved a little by the efforts of Gita. Tradition and modernity is another theme. Tradition is given a lot of importance in the novel. However, it is shown that it is possible to be traditional while being modern. The merits and demerits of the joint family system are elucidated in the novel. The bazaar is a symbol of freedom, while jewelry indicates hoarding. The portraits indicate the heritage of the Haveli. Parda is a symbol of repression, while the Haveli itself represents unchanging beliefs. The novel is relevant in the current age due to various reasons. In the previous lesson, we looked at the summary of the novel along with the character sketches of various people in the novel. In this lesson, we will look at the narrative technique of the novel along with the important themes and symbols. We will also try to figure out whether reading the novel is relevant in the present age. Inside the Haveli is narrated from a third person point of view. However, the story is mostly narrated from the perspective of the protagonist Gita. Technically speaking, the narrative is third person omniscient, but this is only partly. The first chapter of the novel is completely third person omniscient, where the author speaks about the city of Udaipur and its Havelis. But in the later sections of the novel, barring a few incidents such as Pari and Kyali's search for Lakshmi and conversations between the servants, it is almost like a first person narrative by Gita. This is because the attempt by the author is to show the life in a Haveli as seen by an outsider. The viewpoint is by design that of an outsider. Only then would the true nature of the traditions be displayed. It would give an objective assessment. The perspective of anyone else from the Haveli, for instance, that of Kanvaranisa would not be this effective as she would have highlighted the customs of the Haveli and would always look at it subjectively. Gita, who hails from Bombay and is a stranger to the traditions that govern the Haveli, is thus 
the perfect choice of narrator in the novel. Also, Gita's thoughts are laid open to the reader. Her hopes for marriage, her dismay at the restrictions at her in-law's place, her reactions to almost every custom are part of the narrative. This is unlike the other characters whose thoughts are hardly articulated to the reader except when they reveal their thoughts in the process of conversation or their thoughts are interpreted in the form of action. An exception to this is Lakshmi in the first section of the novel. She is introduced before any other character of the Haveli. Her thoughts about how childbirth is a relief from housework are articulated to the reader. The articulation of Gita's thoughts to the reader makes the reader identify with Gita. As living in a Haveli is not the norm in India or anywhere else, most of the targeted readers would live in places where restriction and segregation would not be needed. The reader is completely in tune with Gita when she is shocked at Parda. Gita's indignation at child marriages would be the reader's own. The reader just tries to make sense of various customs just like Gita. So, in a sense, the protagonist's thoughts are the reader's own and her journey to maturity mirrors the reader's quest to understand tradition. The novel begins two years after Gita marries Ajay. But Gita's early life is quickly recalled in the form of flashback in the initial chapters. Again, the fact that Gita is conducting classes is revealed by means of conversation and the way in which the classes began is elucidated in the next chapter. Except for these few instances, the story moves in a chronological order. Inside the Haveli being a novel of a woman's search for identity, feminist elements are invariably present. The novel depicts the helpless state of women in traditional setups. The women are so repressed that they do not and cannot recognize that there is a world outside their houses. But the novel does not say that this situation is irredeemable. Through the delineation of the character of Gita, who brings about change in the Haveli and the state of women, the author suggests that change is possible, even in the most helpless of circumstances. Right in the beginning of the novel, the reader can discern discrimination between the boy child and the girl child. When Lakshmi gives birth, her husband knows it is a girl even before anyone tells him as he knows that the midwife would have come running with glee asking for a gift if it were a boy. Similarly, after the celebrations for the birth of Vijay, people are amazed that there were lavish celebrations to commemorate the birth of just a girl. The division of property 
as shown in the novel does gross injustice to women. They are written off as they have purportedly been given their share of the property as dowry. The real property to be divided after a patriarch's death is only done amongst men and not women. Hence, Gita's question as to Gopal Singh's daughter's share of the property is summarily dismissed by Dhapu. This is a subtle but sure sign of inequality that the author puts forward. The system of Parda is an oppressive practice where the woman cannot show her face to the world. The women subjected to Parda yearn to look beyond the veil to the world outside but cannot do so and cannot say so. The women in the Haveli are cordoned off from the rest of the world. They do not have the freedom to choose their saris as they cannot shop in the market. As Gita thinks they are just like dressed up dolls. They cannot even speak in the streets as upper class women are forbidden from doing so. A sign of the inequality of women is the lack of names for important characters. While Ajay's father is Bhagavat Singh, his wife is called either Bhagavat Singh's wife or Kanvarani Sa, which is an epithet, not her real name. Again, while Bhagavat Singh's father is Sangram Singh, his wife is called just Babasa, a term of respect. This shows how women lose their identity after marriage. In the Haveli of Jeevan Nivas, women cannot express their feelings freely, nor can they say what they feel like. Gita is asked not to speak freely to her cousins and not to display affection for her daughter in public. All the women are caught in a pantomime of dignity and respect, where none of their individuality is left. As Gita observes, they neither express their true feelings nor do they have an opinion about anything. In short, they are like canaries in a cage that sing but cannot do so passionately. The passive life that they lead makes them listless with no exuberance. The widows lead a pitiable life. Even child widows are forbidden from wearing colorful clothes or adorning themselves with jewelry. They are not allowed to participate in religious functions either. This sad state of women is depicted by Rama Mehta effectively. Gita assures in women's empowerment in such a stifling atmosphere, albeit unwittingly. She starts classes in reading, writing and sewing for the maids and later the women in the locality. This ensures that many maids get good jobs and the women generally get more confidence. Her breaking the barriers with her father-in-law suggests her will to break free of restrictive traditions. Thus, there is a hope for women as depicted in the novel. The members of the Haveli are mired in tradition. Gita, who comes from outside, is brought up on modern ideas. There is an understanding of 
how tradition can go hand in hand with modernity. The novel is set in a traditional Haveli whose residents are supposed to follow many customs and rituals. The most significant among these traditions is that of Parda, which requires a married woman from covering her face all the time before male members of the family or outsiders. Even in the modern age, the residents of the Haveli follow this practice contrary to what Gita's parents think. As soon as she gets off the train, the first thing the women folk of the family do is to cover her head. This tradition is so ingrained in the members of the Haveli that Bhavasa, Gita's grandmother-in-law who is on her deathbed makes sure her veil covers her face before the doctor. The tradition of the joint family makes its members exercise restraint in every matter. Gita learns that tradition also forbids men and women from staying in the same quarters except at night. Decorum also indicates that affection for one's husband or children not to be shown in public. Gita is told not to cuddle her newborn baby in front of visitors. She cannot speak to people of her age with familiarity. She cannot leave the Haveli as well except on visits to relatives. All these traditions are stifling to Gita who was used to a different life in her parental home. But as she learns the greatest tradition is to respect the wishes of the elders, which is why no one rebels against customs. Yet, in the midst of tradition, it is possible to be modern. Gita proves this by insisting on education for the girl maid Sita. Although there is initial opposition, Sita soon goes to school. But there is further development with Gita conducting classes in reading and sewing for all the women of the locality, thus ushering in woman empowerment. The support given to these classes by her in-laws makes Gita realize that modernity can be approved by the most traditional looking people. This makes her have a close look at the tradition itself. She realizes that traditions such as the joint family brings people together. It also ensures the well-being of every member unlike nuclear families which have to fend for themselves. Tradition also means that there is always someone to guide the young. The death of Bhabasa makes everyone realize how much they missed her advice. By the end, Gita feels that there is no real reason to break tradition. Modifying it in tune with modernity would suffice. The most unusual of things are pointed out as undermining tradition. For instance, Nandu and Manji complain that Gita's classes for women are against the age-old tradition of the Haveli. But Kanvaranisa, Gita's mother-in-law, who can distinguish between tradition and tradition being held as an excuse for quarrel, speaks for the classes. The tradition of monarchy is held up by the author. She says that the people of Udaipur were sad that the government replaced monarchy as the feel of way of life was lost that way. Pari, the maid, 
recalls the glorious days of monarchy when everyone dressed in finery. She feels that the present system is much worse than the days of monarchy. But tradition does not just mean a show of strictness. A lot of affection exists too. Geeta's mother-in-law is very traditional in her approach, but she is concerned about Geeta as she realizes the latter cannot eat properly in functions and arranges for her to eat alone. Thus, the novel shows that tradition is not always a bad thing and that it is possible to be modern in the midst of tradition. The joint family plays an important role in the novel. The family of Bhagavad Singh is that of a joint family. Geeta hails from a nuclear family. When she first encounters her joint family after marriage, she is confused and scared at the number of people. There are so many people whose names she is supposed to remember and so many people she is supposed to prostrate to. The joint family of Jeevan Nivas also means that she is never given a moment alone. There is always someone with her, either a relative or a servant. She cannot even read a book in peace. Also, she has to wait till after the evening supper to even speak with her husband. The love that everyone in the family has for her as her daughter also means that she cannot admonish Vijay, even if it is for her own good. Joint family also means that there are a lot of traditions to be followed. The demarcation of men and women means that even though Geeta respects her father-in-law very much, she cannot say so to him. But the joint family also means that Geeta can get along with her work and rest, even having to worry about her children's well-being. There is always someone near her children, looking after their needs. This would not be the case in a nuclear family where there are not so many people to take responsibility. As the novel shows, the joint family system means sharing of joy and sorrow. The births, marriages and festivals in the family are celebrated with glee. Similarly, the deaths in the family are mourned together. Joint families provide security to the members of the family. No one is ever alone and lonely in a joint family. Once even when Ajay and both his parents are out of the Haveli, he does not have to worry about Geeta being alone because of the other members of the family who would take care of her. Joint family also means solidarity. When Lakshmi disappears, not one member of the family tells any outsider the entire truth. The respect of the family is more important to them than idle gossip. There are various symbols in the novel which represent different values. Now the bazaar, as Geeta is not allowed to go out of the Haveli except while visiting relatives, while being chaperoned by many people, the bazaar of Udaipur symbolizes freedom to her. When she sees people shopping on their own, she envies them as she can only choose from the selection that the accountant brings to the Haveli. 
the village women who frequent the bazaars symbolize simple grace while contrasted with the women of the haveli who are bowed down by the weight of tradition the bazaar symbolizes life outside the haveli as geeta was not used to a restricted life before marriage to her it is a symbol of all that she has missed through marriage jewelry symbolizes different things to different people in the novel while for the village people it symbolizes pleasure and joy a possession that they are free to display for the woman in the haveli jewelry is an object to be hoarded it is also something to be envious about as there is always someone from some other haveli who has more thus jewelry represents material wealth and its value geeta chances upon these one day when she trespasses into the men's courtyard there are many portraits of the forefathers of the family the men in the portraits seem to geeta to symbolize the traditions of haveli they seem to be guardians of the generations to see whether they have lived up to the reputation of the haveli they also symbolize the pride and honor associated with the haveli but at times when geeta feels crushed by the lineage and ancestry of the haveli that is cited to keep her from breaking tradition the same portrait symbolizes this lineage which she feels she would love to be rid of they represent a false sense of prestige based on past achievements the parda symbolizes at the outset bondage for the woman she has to keep her head covered at almost all times her face is not even considered fit to be seen by other people the parda represents all the restrictive practices that are targeted at women in the name of tradition the system of parda also symbolizes the hypocrisy of the people at the haveli where only women cover their faces geeta finds that the parda affords her a chance to think while others are speaking the haveli symbolizes tradition the 300 year old haveli represents the ancient traditions that it is upholding it is often described as a fortress in the novel so the haveli also symbolizes security and support for the members of the family also just as havelis are usually said to be haunted by ghosts this old haveli is haunted by ghosts of the past not just do the words of ancestors weigh upon the present members of the family but even events of the past such as lakshmi's disappearance exist as ghosts in the haveli inside the haveli written more than 35 years ago the only novel of a woman novelist and the winner of the prestigious sahitya academy award might seem dated and the scope limited as it deals with the happenings in a single household however this is not the case the novel is relevant to this day and age due to various reasons there are several rebels without a cause today there are people who would be iconoclasts and rule breakers out of pure pressure or by listening to useless talk there needs to be a serious thought process at work before the rules are broken while tradition should not be followed blindly the traditions that conserve a society and relationships 
need to be nurtured. This is shown in the novel where traditions such as child marriage that are harmful to individual liberty are challenged if not completely abolished. However, traditions such as the joint family are nurtured as they form part of an important institution. Thus, the novel is relevant even today. I hope you all have enjoyed the second part of this novel inside the Haveli. We have seen different customs and traditions existing then and we can also see a relevance of this novel to this present day. Thank you.